Getting right into today's video, I am doing a very short set of nails. This was kind of fun to create because I haven't done a short set of nails on myself in years. So this was definitely interesting and I definitely enjoyed it. I'm starting off this set by removing the shine from the natural nail bed. For this step, I am using my Kiara Sky Rechargeable E-File and I have it at a very low speed of about 4000 RPMs. This is going to be crucial so you do not damage the nail bed. You want to work with a very low speed. Along with that, I am using my mandrel bit with a sanding band. And this sanding band is from Profiles Backstage and the grit of the sanding band is fine. If you do have a lot more experience, you can use different grits. But if you are a beginner, I highly recommend you guys stick to fine as this also helps with the integrity of the nail. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails. If you guys are having issues e-filing or want to learn exactly how I do it, I do have a very in-depth video on that and I also give you guys little pointers on the e-file itself. So make sure you guys check that out if you guys are interested. When working with my non-dominant hand, which is my left hand, I am working a lot slower and much more carefully. I want to make sure that I am not going to hurt myself and I definitely don't want the e-file to skip because that can also be painful. So for this, I like to just be very, very gentle. I sometimes will use my right hand because I have more control of that. I will help myself e-file by moving my right hand in the direction and placing it in the position that I need it to be in order to file off that shine. So as you can see, I'm constantly moving my right hand around and this helps me tremendously. So just a quick little tip if you guys are struggling, I can definitely do a video where I just use a hand file. If you guys would like, leave a comment down below, let me know and I will definitely try to get that out for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and finish these off. Now I'm taking my needle bit and just removing any dead skin cells that may have been left behind from my mandrel bit. Because this is skinny, it helps get into those very hard to reach areas and this definitely helps with any lifting issues you may have. Now I'm taking my ball bit and going around gently on the cuticle area, making sure that I'm removing any dead skin cells from the cuticle. I do not like to use cuticle nippers, so if you guys are just like me, I highly recommend these. It came in a pack of three, including that needle bit that I previously showed you guys. They are from Amazon and I love them. They make the prep process so much easier and so much more effective. And I am continuing to use my e-file at 4000 RPMs throughout this entire prep process. I'm going in and placing my tips onto my natural nail bed. These are the universal tips from Not Polish. They are a full sculpted look and they are pre-shaped in the stiletto shape, which make an extremely easy transition to coffin or even tapered square. If you guys are looking for an easy to shape tip, I highly recommend these. They give such a stunning look, especially with long nails. So now I am taking my nail tip cutters and chopping off basically the whole tip. <laughs> it was kind of funny to do this because I'm just not used to it. 
So I am leaving just a little bit of wiggle room. I'm making them slightly longer than what I want to file them down to because I am going to be shaping those nails into the almond shape. And if you leave them a little bit longer, it gives you more space to work with. So now I'm taking my nail clippers and these are flat. So it helps tremendously when shaping the nail. As you can see, I'm clipping off any excess that I technically don't need. And this saves me time when I'm shaping the nails. If you missed my shaping video, I will link that in the cards in this video so you guys can check it out. I go very in depth with tapered square, coffin, stiletto, almond, and round-ish oval shape. So make sure you guys check that out. Now that I'm done clipping off any excess tip, I am going in with my hand file. This is the Tammy Taylor Peel and Stick file. And I am going in and just shaping those nails. This is my interpretation of almond. You may or may not agree with it. That is completely fine. Everybody has their own style when it comes to nails and nail shaping. So it is very important you guys take that in mind. Um, somebody might not agree with your shape, but if you like it and your clients like it, that is totally okay. So I am going in and just gently filing each side, continuously moving from side to side, rounding off that tip, making sure that the point is directly in the middle. You want to continuously move so you do not over file one side or the other. And this gives you a better feel for getting that point right in the middle. Now that I am content with the shape, I'm dusting off any excess dust and I'm going back with my mandrel bit and my sanding band and just gently blending the tip to the natural nail bed. It doesn't require too much filing. I'm just trying to bulk down that little ridge for my acrylic application process. Now that I'm done with that, I am cleansing the surface of the nail. This helps remove any excess dust and it also dehydrates the nail. For this step, I am using my lint-free wipes and some Young Nails Swipe. Once it is nice and dry and dehydrated, I'm taking my Young Nails Protein Bond and applying a coat of that onto the natural nail bed. This helps with the product adhesion and I do believe this is what helps my client's nails stay on for a very long amount of time. So for this video, I did want to do a simple set of nails just so you guys can really see how I apply the acrylic on short nails. For my thumb, because it is a larger surface that I am covering, I am doing the three ball method for the most part and I am applying three beads onto the nail. So one at the tip, one in the middle section, and then one near the cuticle. 
and if you guys are struggling with your acrylic application that probably means you do not have your liquid to powder ratio down right so i do recommend you guys check out my liquid to powder ratio video i go really in depth break it all the way down i get tons of positive feedback to this day on that video so make sure you guys check it out now i noticed that the nail was a little too thin so i went ahead and placed another one right where the free edge of my natural nail bed is and technically where your apex would be I am not technically building an apex on these nails because they are very short and I'm going to be changing them extremely fast. I am going in on my index finger and showing you the one ball method which is normally what I use when I do short nails on clients. So I take a very large bead of acrylic and then I am placing it near the cuticle, pushing it up towards the cuticle, making sure that I'm holding the finger downwards so that the product itself flows down and it doesn't flood the cuticle area because that can cause lifting. I'm just going to continue to pat it into place. I'm trying to make sure to keep the shape as perfect as possible by pushing it in on the sides. And as you can see, that was pretty easy. I do like to keep my stuff nice and perfect, so I'm going to continue to pat it into place until it is nice and flat. So again, we place that large bead near the cuticle, push it up, holding the finger down so that the product flows down. And then I start forming it into the shape of the nail and patting it constantly, making sure it is flowing down. And then I'm just fixing any areas that might have more product and all you need to do is constantly pat it into place. I do show in my liquid to powder ratio, I show you guys different sizes of beads. When I mention small, medium, or large, I'm referring to the sizes that I showed you guys in that video. So if you guys want to refer back to that, go ahead and check it out like I mentioned before. I'm just lightly tapping the surface of the nail to make sure that it makes that clicking noise which ensures me that the product is fully dry and I can go ahead and get started with my filing process. So for this step I am taking my Kiara Sky e-file and I have it at a speed of about 8 to 9,000 RPMs. That's what I'm comfortable working with and I find it that's the perfect speed for my filing. Along with that I am using my 5-in-1 Kiara Sky bit 
This is in the fine grit. Because I don't want it to be super harsh on the nail and I'm just smoothing out the surface, I do like to work with a fine bit. So I'm just going around the cuticle gently and because this is tapered, it helps get into that cuticle area, which is a lot more snug. And then I use the thicker part of that bit to file the entire surface of the nail. Because these nails are short, I am going horizontally versus when the nails are long, I like to file vertically up and down as you do cover a lot more surface. But like I mentioned, because they are short, I can file a lot easier going horizontally. So again, going around that cuticle area very gently, making sure that the acrylic is nice and flush to the natural nail bed. And then I'm filing the surface of the nail. And I go ahead and finish that part. Now I'm going in with my hand file and just perfecting that shape once again. It does get a little bit distorted with the acrylic application, so make sure you guys are always doing this as well. It makes everything nice and perfect. And then I am going lightly over the surface of the nail just to make sure there's not any harsh ridges from that e-file. Now I'm going in with my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage and buffing the surface of the nail into a smooth perfection. I am definitely not skipping this step because I am going to be doing a little bit of nail art and you want your surface to be extremely smooth to work with. Now I'm just dusting all that off and then I'm taking my lint-free wipe and some swipe once again and cleansing the surface of the nail in preparation for our nail art. I don't like to wash my hands because it just takes way too much time, so I use this method instead. 
Now I did decide to add in my right hand and I'm going to be sharing with you guys just a small portion of what it looks like to do my right hand. Just because I've mentioned it before in my other videos, it's really hard for me to stay in frame and in focus. I like to bring my hand really close to my face whenever I'm doing my own nails. So a lot of the time I forget that I'm filming and I cannot get it right for you guys. I will eventually try to figure out a good way of filming that for you guys so you guys can see the entire process. But I tried my best on this video to show you guys that. I did apply the tips. I cut them like I did on my left hand. Now I'm shaping them with my hand file. And you guys can kind of see exactly how I do that. I like to move my right hand instead of moving my left hand. I more or less do both of them at the same time. It kind of helps speed up the process. So I'm just going to go ahead and let you guys kind of watch that process. Now I'm doing my entire prep process exactly how I did it on my left hand. I'm blending that tip to the natural nail bed with my e-file nice and gently. It is a lot harder to do it on this hand as you can see, but it takes little to no effort to kind of blend that out. So I did it without struggling too much. And then I'm going in and cleansing the surface and then I am going to be priming the nail with Young Nails Protein Bond. If you guys are struggling with lifting, I do recommend you guys to do two coats instead of just one coat of that Protein Bond. Now you guys are going to kind of get a sneak peek of what it is to apply the acrylic on my right hand. I did get extremely out of frame on this area so you guys are only going to be seeing maybe two, three nails. Um, but I did the exact same process on my thumb as I did it on my left hand. I'm doing the three ball method for this nail because it is a larger surface. And my first bead goes in that middle section. I'm dragging it down. Then I am doing one at the tip. And then I'm going to be placing one in the cuticle area. Now for the acrylic application for the rest of the nails, because I'm a lot slower using my left hand and I just cannot do it right, I am going to be doing the two ball method. So I'm placing one bead near the cuticle area 
and I like to rest my hand on another um, container just so that I can have it steady and I'm not moving everywhere. So I'm going ahead and applying that, making sure I'm cleaning up the sides. And then I'm going to be placing another small bead on the tip and then blending it up into the other product. But it definitely takes a lot of patience to be doing your own nails, especially doing both hands. It can be a pain, but it's definitely worth it and you can advertise your own work. So I do recommend you guys to try it. Um, of course, with more practice you do, the better you're going to get, the easier it's going to get. So don't get discouraged. You guys got this. Now after this I did stop filming because it was getting really hard to stay in frame but I went ahead and finished applying the acrylic, I filed, cleansed the surface of the nail and all that good stuff off camera. Now we're going to be moving into the nail art on my left hand. I'm taking my nail art brush from Amazon, you can find that in my Amazon storefront. For this design I'm also using my white gel paint and then I'm going to be applying that as a base for my neon pigments. So what I'm doing here is just taking my nail art brush and drawing a line. We're almost going to be creating like a faux smile line. Um, instead of creating it with a colored acrylic, I figured I would just use a nude base and then draw in that um, nail art. So I'm going to go ahead and do one side first because I'm going to be doing two different colors on every nail. I want to make sure that the color doesn't transfer onto the other side. So I'm doing one side first and then I'm going to be placing that into the light, curing it, making sure that it is nice and dry. You want to put it in the LED light for at least 30 seconds and then we are going to be applying our pigments. Again, don't forget to cure these in the light since it is gel paint. As you can see, I already placed the green on there, but I'm just patting that into place. Um, and then I'm basically doing blue green on the thumb, then yellow orange on the index finger, orange pink on the middle finger, pink purple on the ring finger, and then purple blue on the pinky. And so I'm placing the color on the nail and I'm making sure that I'm doing the pattern correctly. And then I'm going to be dusting off any excess pigment from that nail. And then once I am done placing that, dusting it off, I'm going to be doing the second color, which requires me to do another line of that white gel paint. So I'm carefully drawing it right next to that existing color and then I'm going to be drawing it up towards that middle area of the nail and I'm going to be repeating that on the rest of the nails and placing it in the light once again to cure it for at least 30 seconds.
once I'm done drawing it, again, make sure you cure it in the light. Once it's done curing, take it out and start rubbing in your pigments. Like I said, this one's going to have yellow orange, so I'm doing the pattern on the rest of the nails gently right next to the color so it doesn't bleed. I don't want it to fully blend with the other one. I definitely want that more of the harsh transition between the two colors. And don't forget to dust off any excess pigment. Once you are content with the design, I am going in with my Not Polish Gloss It Top Coat. I am gently applying one coat of that onto the entire surface of the nail. I did shiny, so you guys should be proud of me. I normally go for matte, but I wanted to do something completely different from the length down to the shape down to the finish. So. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that on the rest of the nails. Make sure you cure it for at least one minute. I like to do two minutes to ensure everything is nice and cured all the way through. This is an amazing top coat, so I do recommend it if you guys are looking for one. Don't forget your cuticle oil at the end. But that basically concludes this video. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.